The PL Show is brought to you by Kel Chaco, Kel360, and Kel Kids to Pay. The Kel Toothpaste PL Show. This is the Kel Toothpaste PL Show. If you're just joining us, you're welcome to a brand new week of the most exciting conversation with women and about women. Today we'll be meeting another phenomenal lady. Now this woman is inventive, she's brilliant, she's great at what she does, and she's come all the way from the United States to share her story with us here. And that's why you should stay with us on the program. My name is Kemeni Amano. The Kel Toothpaste PEO Show is brought to you by the Kel Toothpaste brands, Kel360, Kel Case, and Kel Chaco. This is the Kel Toothpaste PEO Show. I'll be right back, don't go away. Anti-cavity, gum protection, brighter teeth, and fresh breath. I'm a fat missy way. We're part of Bantama. Matthias here. Sasso, Sasso. A smile, the fresh breath. Me, Jidi said we use Kel 360 toothpaste. So me kai. Kel 360 toothpaste. Guys, Kia. Kel 360 toothpaste. It's a gum protector. Onim jom kasan kasan kasan. Kine kosen. Kel 360 did the way. It's cool mint. Gives me fresh breath and your confidence booster. A you will see so finin kika when you ne ye. Kel 360 toothpaste. Happy. Kel 360 toothpaste, anti cavity, gum protection, brighter teeth, and fresh breath. Kel, happy smile. This advert is FDA approved. Welcome back to the Kel Toothpaste PL show. My guest today on the program, a very special guest, uh, is Dr. Thelma Bennis Wright. You're welcome to the program, Doc. Thank you so much for having me. I have read your profile and I'm if I tell you I'm impressed, that's that's an understatement. Yeah. But you're doing so great. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Let's talk about uh, Dr. Wright. Mm. Who is Dr. Wright? Who is Dr. Wright? Dr. Wright is a mother of three. That comes first. Mm -hmm. I have three girls. And um, on my downtime, I'm a physician. And I'm also an attorney. Mm -hmm. So I do pain medicine at the University of Maryland. Um, the medical director of a large institution, um, Chronic Pain. And I'm also the vice chair of perioperative medicine. So people who are going to sleep surgery, I'm in charge of their pain needs. I'm also in charge of wellness in our department because there's a lot of burnout okay. within physicians. And so, you know, because we're working too hard and, you know, COVID came. So a lot of physicians have been stressed. Some have retired early. And so the few of us who are left, mm -hmm. we're trying to make sure we make conditions good for them. What kept you going? What kept me going? Um, I love what I do. And I think when you love what you do, you, you don't get as burnt out. I love my colleagues. I've worked with my colleagues for 17 years and we get along. If I can't make it early, I just have to call Dr. Lee and say, Dr. Lee, can you see my first patient? And he's like, I got you. And mm -hmm. he got me. And I got him and I got Dr. Gatsu. So mm -hmm. we have a great working relationship. You know, I always say, if I leave, I'm taking you guys with me. <laughs> so, you know, and I haven't left because of how great my job is. Mm. And then I'm an attorney, but I do mostly consulting. Oh. So I'm not in court. I just okay. talk to attorneys and give them advice. Oh. And that's what I mostly do. Mm, I, I see. Yeah. And then you have an MBA. You I didn't do. mention that. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I got it during COVID because oh. we were all at home. And I said, why not? I had been thinking about it and um, it was online. So I said, why not? I'm home. Mm -hmm. So two years, 2020 to 2022, I, see. I knocked it out and got it. Yes. I see. But it, but then it says, it says great things about you. I mm. mean, having the uh, medical degree, having a JD and then having an M MBA as mm, well. Yeah. I don't know how you did it. I know, I don't either. <laughs> don't so, ask me. So let's start from where uh, the story actually begins. Before you go to University of Maryland School right. of Medicine, yeah, right. you were little Thelma. Yeah, that's so right. So let's talk about the younger Thelma. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was growing up like? My mom was a single mom and raised three girls. I was the firstborn. 
and I, you know, when I was when I was a young child, I knew I was going into medicine. Mm. You know it. You know, African parents, you're going to medicine, you're going into medicine. And so I was sort of groomed in that pathway. I went to Wesley Girls and, you know, with, you know, you know, I don't know whether you went to school here in Ghana, but you either doing sciences or doing arts. So I was sort of in the science track. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us in the science track, my colleagues ended up in medicine. And so that's how it went. I went to Legon actually. Oh, I did I not see. get into medicine because at that time there were only two med schools, right? Tech and PG. University of Ghana. Mm. So I did two years. I didn't really like what I was doing, biological sciences. I wanted to be a physician. Mm -hmm. So on vacation, one vacation, I went to London. Then I went to the States. And I heard I didn't even pass an exam. And that's why I stayed. Back home. Yeah, my girlfriend called me. I actually interviewed her two days ago. And she's like, hmm, you didn't make it. And I was like, what? I didn't make it. So I was like, I'm not going back. Mm. So I just decided on a whim to stay. And here we are. And looking back, I know. I'm sure you're glad you did. I know. I, I think it was ordained. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't plan it. I was just going on vacation. I went with a little suitcase. Mm -hmm. And I was just going for a month to come back. But when Rosina said, you didn't make it, I was like, I'm not going back. What am I going back for? Mm -hmm. I don't like what I'm doing. Probably that's why I didn't make it. <laughs> But who, who or what would you say were your influences growing up? You know, I have twin uncles, my dad's brothers. Mm -hmm. And one is, an, one is a physician and one is an attorney. And I hold them in such high esteem. And so my uncle, you know, when he would visit, they live in the States. When he would visit us in Ghana, he would always say, Sebe your doctor. Let me say, you know, your doctor. Mm. So I kind of always remember that. And uh, yeah, I don't know why I kept with that pathway. And, you know, f thankfully I got in and, I, you know, I think it was God, really. Mm -hmm. I can't even say I can pinpoint how it happened. It just happened. Right. Yeah. And I'll take a guess. The other uncle influenced you to get in a JD as well? No, actually, <laughs> no. Um, with a JD, a lot of people always said, Thelma, you should be a lawyer because mm -hmm. you talk too much and you're always arguing and you always want to win. So when I interviewed for med school, the one I entered, mm -hmm. actually the guy who interviewed me, the dean, was like, why are you applying to med school? You should apply to law school. And I was like, oh, God, I didn't get in. Mm -hmm. If this guy is telling me, why am I applying here? I should apply to law school. I'm not getting in. But a week later, I got the acceptance letter. And it always stayed at the back of my mind. Mm. And there was this gentleman who was my mentor. He's an MD, JD, MPH, um, Dr. Spivak. And I remember I would ask him to give lectures to my trainees. So one day I was dropping him off and he goes, why don't you apply to law school? Mm. I'm like, nah. He goes, Thelma, do it. I was like, okay. And I took a class, I took the LSATs and I got in. Mm. And I did a four year course in three years. You make it sound easy. It's easy if you it put your mind that easy. <laughs> No, maybe because you're, you're special. Yeah, in God's <laughs> yeah, eyes. Yeah. I, I really do, in God's eyes. Because, I mean, my kids bore the brunt. Mm. Um, I've been blessed. They're good kids. My oldest is in medical school. But I leave home at 6, and I come back at 10 at night for three years. I did that. I see. So I didn't see them. If you were to describe yourself mm. or your life from, you know, little Thelma to Dr. Wright, uh, what would be those words? I've been blessed. I've really been blessed. Um, and I think, you know, and I, people don't know that, but I think when you're a good person, mm -hmm. things happen for you. Mm -hmm. um, people always want to cut corners and be mean and steal and lie. And, and I try to stay away from that. I try to be the best person I can be. And I think it pays off when you do that, mm. when you're just authentic. You know, if I don't like something, I'll let you know. Right. I'm not going to go behind your back and gossip. I tell you, tell you in the face. Mm -hmm. And even at work, you know, I have the highest retention of people who've worked with me the whole time I've been there. Mm, you I know? see. That's mm -hmm. interesting because mm -hmm. people don't like it when you tell them the truth. I do. And they love that because they know Dr. Wright will tell, tell us the truth. You know, mm -hmm. and if I, I would just let you know, because I just don't like, you know, when I see people in the corner and this, I say, why don't you talk to them? Just yeah. talk to them. You know, and so just be authentic. It's easier that way. Yeah, it is. Anyway, let's take a look at your story in pictures mm. in the Seed to Oak segment. Don't go away.
So there you have it, uh, Dr. Wright in pictures from when she was just little Thelma and she decided to go abroad and not return because you failed an exam. Mm -hmm. But there's no regret there. No. At all. No, at all. Our conversation continues, but let me tell you about Kel Kit's toothpaste. If you have children between the ages of two and six years old, then you know that it's really difficult to have them brush their teeth. And that's because sometimes the toothpaste you give them is just not appropriate for them. All you need to do is grab the Kelkis toothpaste and then you no longer have to fight with them in the mornings to, or at nights to have them uh, brush their teeth. Kelkis toothpaste is approved by the Food and Drugs Authority so you can rely on its quality. Your story at the University of Maryland began, you know, sometime in 2006, would that be correct? Yes, yes. Okay, so how did you get into University of Maryland? Pain medicine is what I subspecialized in. Mm. So I'm an anesthesiologist, but I did a subspecialty in pain. Now pain is only one year, but you spend half the time doing different rotations. So I didn't feel too equipped to go out on my own. So I said to myself, I'm gonna do a year in an academic institution, learn as much as I can and leave. So I applied to different jobs, got huge offers, a lot of money, Mm -hmm. and I turned them down and took the low money University of Maryland. Why? Don't ask me, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, University of Maryland offered me 50% what other institutions were offering. 50% less? Yeah. I was being offered 400, 500,000 a year and University of Maryland, I think it was 225 or something. And my dad, my, my dad was like, take University of Maryland. And I'm like, okay, so I did. And, but, and that was also because, you know, the guy who was the director there, I wanted to go learn from him, mm. learn and then take the skills out and make even more, right? Mm -hmm. But when I got there, we, they had hired a new gentleman and he quit. He quit four months after I, left. I got there and they gave me the job, a new graduate. Wow. That's what I'm saying. So it, God took me there because why would I, leave a $470,000 offer to 50% to, less. Right, to 225. And yeah, he left. But it. you were also thrown into a position because four yeah, months I was, down the line. I was. What was that like? It was, <laughs> I had to fake it. Fake to it. To make it. To make it, yeah. Because you're fresh out of school, mm -hmm. you were there to learn, and now you're the boss. You know, four months after you start. What was the biggest struggle then? Being the black boss with a bunch of Caucasians, mm -hmm. having to tell them, having to be the one who knows it. And I was just, gra I had just graduated. Mm -hmm. But somehow it worked out. You know, I was interim, and my boss, you know, made me interim for a, maybe a year, about a year, mm -hmm. nine months. Interviewed all these people, big names in the, you know, specialty, yeah. big names that I knew who had written books. Mm -hmm. and. One day I was Did driving. Settled on you. Yeah, he called me. I was driving. He was like, "You want it?" I was like, "What?" And he offered it to me. Did you ever understand why they chose you? I never asked. But I don't think they have any regrets. I don't think so. Let's talk about your time there. You had taken up that position. Um, what happened thereafter? So I mean, it grew. Mm -hmm. It expanded. You know, when I got there, they were seeing maybe ten patients a day, and I was like, "What is this?" So we expanded. You know, we did stuff they hadn't done. So I was innovative. Mm. I was, you know, forward looking. I was young. So I had the energy, you know. And so I think I brought some energy to, to the, the division. Mm. Yes. And, you know, we expanded into the community and numbers got, you know, of course, once the money be made, everyone is happy with you, mm -hmm. you know, so. Being uh, the black lead of Caucasians, I don't see it as an easy uh, thing to do. What do you think kept you going in that position that whatever the case is, I'll be here and I'll do what I'm supposed to do and even more. Yeah, I think authenticity, mm. being yourself. You know, when I say fake it, meaning if I didn't know something, I would go quickly go to my office, read it, learn it, and then come back and teach it if someone asks me a question. Or I'll say, I don't know, let me go check and get back with you. And so I didn't act like I knew it all. Mm -hmm. But I think the authenticity and also having wisdom so, and being fair and transparent. And that as a leader, you know, and also, I'm not afraid of not being liked. You know, I mean, I, 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 I would dare say my, the staff like me. I don't know about love, but I think they <laughs> like me. But I, I believe that 
if you are afraid not to be liked, you can never be a leader. Mm -hmm. So I do know some people would, but they will not show it in my face. Mm -hmm. You know, they, I'll, I'll be shown the respect, but if they don't like me, I don't care, mm -hmm. you know, and I've led them and, you know, we've done a good job, you know, and so I think that just being authentic and true to yourself. We've talked about pain management a lot. Pain management, Nayadine. So pain management and um, is a specialty that I don't think is very popular here. Maybe it's coming up in mm -hmm. Ghana. But it's a specialty where we take care of patients who have chronic pain. And what's chronic pain? Chronic pain is pain that has been around for about three to six months. So if a doc refers a patient to me and the patient just had pain for two weeks, I'm probably going to send the patient back mm. because it may get better. Mm. But if it's persisted for three to six months, then we start wondering what's going on. Something is going on. So let's look into it. So let's get x-rays. Let's get an MRI. Mm. You know, and then at that point, when they come see me, we get imaging studies. You know, we examine them and then we come up with a plan. But I don't just do medicines. Okay. I do injections. Okay. And so, you know, we do a combination of different things. We don't cure them. We you maintain manage? them. Okay. How um, popular is the practice? Oh, my God. Maybe not here. Yeah. I mean, I think that here, if they had people who were trained to do it, people will go. Okay. But it's expensive to maintain. So maybe it's not very affordable. I don't know. I don't know why you don't have a lot of it here. Okay. But yeah, I've been here. I went to Kolebu to consult. And um, there wasn't a whole lot of it. There wasn't mm. a whole lot of it. When I hear pain management, then opioid use also comes to mind. Mm. Uh, tell us how that comes into your practice. Mm. And uh, I know you're also against substance abuse. Mm. So let's talk about all of that mm. together. Mm. With patients with chronic pain, the goal is to start them, you know, if you look at the WHO ladder, you start them with things like Tylenol or paracetamol, mm -hmm. ibuprofen or aspirin, then you go up the ladder. Mm. However, by the time they reach me, They've already tried those meds and it didn't work. Right. So then they come to me. And so when they get to me, they're expecting the big guns, the opioids, mm. the narcotics, the Percocet, the Oxycontin. But those are addicting. So our goal is not to keep them on high doses of these medications. But unfortunately, patients with pain end up with depression and anxiety and then they, they get involved with these medications mm -hmm. and they get addicted. So they come to me hoping I will continue them. And that's not, you know, our goal to keep these patients on these medications. So what do you do differently then? Well, now we introduce medical cannabis, okay. your pot, your mm -hmm. weed, your marijuana mm -hmm. for pain control. And that is to supplement the decrease in the opioid dose for them to take the cannabis to right. supplement it. Yes. So how would you say your patients respond to that medical marijuana? Oh my God, um, it's been just amazing um, because the patients come in upset with me because I'm not giving them the doses of opioids they were on. Mm -hmm. And the minute I say, have you considered medical cannabis? They just light up. They're like, oh, I didn't even think about that. Mm. And they take it, they can sleep. And the thing is, Patients who are able to sleep well have less pain. So medical cannabis will help you sleep, mm. even if it doesn't help the pain. But once you have a good night's sleep, because most people are tossing and turning because of their back pain or their knee pain or their headache. Mm. So if they're able to sleep, they wake up refreshed, there's a sense of wellness, and they don't care about the pain as much. So it's sort of a distractor, kind of. Right. And that works differently from, you know, the, the opioid, opioids, yes. which will attack the pain. Yes. Yes. Temporarily. Yes. And um, you also have this device. Yes. For respiratory uh, depression. So one of the risks of high dose opioids uh -huh. is your breathing can stop and you can die. I've, you know, as an, as an attorney, I've had cases like that where a patient was given an opioid, a naive patient, oh. and then they added some other medication, they go back into the room, gone, and I'm called, you know, that's like a no-brainer, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this device will be worn by patients on opioids to monitor the respiratory rate. What does it mean to you to, to have, you know, invented that? And I, like again, I always say, God, this just came, one day I was in the shower of all places, and I'm like, you know, every time you write an opioid in the States, you have to give an antidote. But the antidote has to be administered 
by the patient. And so I'm in the shower and I'm like, if a patient is dying or comatose, how are they going to give themselves this drug? They're gone. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I wonder whether there's a way I can detect impending death right. and then give the antidote automatically. Mm. There you have it. Are you allowed to tell us how the device works? I mean, it's going to be, you know, placed on you, mm -hmm. and then it will continuously detect. Right. It's not the respiratory rate, because I'm not going to give you that. <laughs> but uh, it will continuously detect the most sensitive variable that would say there's impending death. Danger. And then it right. will give the antidote. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's just, it's... Maybe if it goes into the market, then I'll be, like, super rich. I, I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I see that happening. Cause, Amen. Because this is, Amen. it's like, not only is it inventive, mm. but also really important for yes. people who are mm. on pain medication. Yes. yes. Wow. Yes. And even for people who may be abusing the narcotics. Yes. yes. That's really, you know, like the heroin abusers. Yes. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, so what is, what is a typical day in your life like? You, you sound very busy to me. I am. <laughs> I'm pretty busy. Um, yeah, and so, you know, wake up in the morning around six-ish, you know, take a shower, go, and, you know, I eat, in, I eat on the road while I'm driving, and then I get to work, and then it's the whole day, and then meetings, and it's nonstop. But I get a break after work, and I spend a lot of my time at the gym. Mm. That's like my wellness, my zen. So I don't play with my gym. I go, right. you know, go to the jacuzzi, go to the sauna, work out. So that's like my downtime with Thelma. Just mm -hmm. to reflect on the day, you, what am I doing this? What's ne and of course, then this show that I, so it's, you know Hannah is emailing mm -hmm. me and texting me, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm only one person, but I'm still able to multitask. Right. You know, and my kids, the best their hearts, they're amazing. So. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Was it always this easy? I think I've just been blessed with the ability to multitask. Right. That's all. It's not easy, but it's it's You're doable. able to do mm -hmm. it. You're able mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's take a look at that in pictures on 360. <laughs> Dr. Rides believes that if you are afraid not to be liked, you will never be a leader. She is a leader, a lover of health and wellness, an inventor and host of Diva Dog Let's Talk podcast. With over a decade of experience, Dr. Rides leadership ensures top-notch care through a multidisciplinary approach. She radiates unwavering strength and massive braveness wherever she finds herself. Again, we see Dr. Wright in pictures, and like I said, she sounds busy, and it, it does look busy. That's what we captured in the 360 segment. If you liked it, then we should be saying thank you to uh, Kel 360 Toothpaste. It's an all-family, uh, appropriate toothpaste for all ages. It's minty flavored, which means that it'll keep your breath fresh all through the day, but it'll also help fight dental plaque, or prevent cavity, and then it'll stop your gum from decaying. Is also approved by the Food and Drugs Authority. You're watching the Kel Toothpaste PL Show. My guest today is one phenomenal and brilliant woman who's come all the way from the U.S. to speak to us here in Ghana. Yes, we'll hear more about her story if you stay with us. Don't go away. Different era, better result. Time has changed and time has brought Kel Charcoal Toothpaste. Healthy gums, anti cavity, fresher breath, and it whitens teeth. Kale Chocolate Toothpaste, Sankofa. Yenchi, Kale Chocolate Toothpaste. Happy, Happy Smile. This advert is FDA approved. 
Welcome back to the Kel Toothpaste PL show. We'll start off with your um, podcast, mm. Diva Doc. Let's, Let's talk. talk. So, you know, after all the busy life, you still had to have time <laughs> to get on a podcast. Yeah. How did it begin? Well, it hasn't started yet. Oh, right. um, no, it hasn't. We're still taping episodes to make the first season. Mm -hmm. So um, that's sort of my retirement plan, mm. how to start slowing down on the eight to four job, you know, because yeah. I want to do me. Yeah. at some point enjoy yeah Thelma at yeah some point. yeah 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 so what is it about so you know a lot of people will come to me and say you know Thelma your story is inspiring why don't you have a f podcast and, and I'm like so what am I gonna do talk about myself or the podcast that doesn't even make any sense mm -hmm. so I said instead of that I'll flip it and talk to women who have achieved mm -hmm. great heights you know despite the odds you know, women, women who would inspire other women, mm -hmm. you know, talk to women. So that's how it got born. Mm. And, you know, I had thought about something like that years ago. And I was like, eh, I don't have time for that. You know, I even taped a pilot. All right. But the pilot was not the same theme. It was more because of my MDJD. Mm. It was going to be a show talking to patients who had been injured by the medical community. And then bringing a medicine, I mean, a doctor and a lawyer on the show mm -hmm. to talk about the case. Right. But then I didn't happen and I just forgot about that it. That also sounds like a good yeah, idea. Yeah, it may, it may be a spinoff. Uh -huh. It may be a spinoff. Okay. But yeah, and then this year, just too many people were coming to me. And I said, this is supposed to happen. Uh -huh. You know, and, you know, I got the, you know, someone to produce it. I got the team. I got Hannah. It just, everything went, got into place. Uh -huh. And anybody would ask, I would ask to be a guest, would say yes. A few people kind of giving me the run around. But so far, it's been good. So you've taped some episodes already? About maybe, what, eight Eight? Yeah, so we want we want to hit. So, 13. what kind of topics have you uh, tackled on 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 those? Everybody, eight? it could be a doc, it could be anybody. You know, I'm getting ready to go interview a lady who owns a hair braiding shop right. and who has done well for herself. So it doesn't have to be someone who is educated. You know, so far I've been talking to like highly educated mm -hmm. people. But I think that, you know, I did release a video on International Women's Day mm -hmm. and a bunch of my friends, you know, did a little clip and they were all like, educated right. and so someone made a comment is she only going to be doing educated women <laughs> so like, i gotta i gotta diversify and do other people okay. and then i pretty much like blow up my guest because it's so <laughs> and you know a lot of people say no because they um think i'm going to delve into some rumors yeah. or but no i i, I just want to blow them up you know, so it's positive. Mm -hmm. And so I'm highlighting what they've achieved. You Do know? you find that your own life experience, professional yes. experience, you know, yes. comes through a lot? Yes. Yes. You know, in your conversation. No, not really. Makes it easy? No, not really. I, I try to make it different. And so far, the guests have said, wow, this interview has been the best mm -hmm. because it's just we don't go too much about the technicality mm -hmm. it's more what are the obstacles you faced and yeah. how did you decide to do this or pivot mm -hmm. or whatever so I've talked to you know like the booker owner a lot of good women you know women who inspire me so it's been good I see so when is it out I think we're shooting for the fall, like October-ish. Mm. October I know you said that uh, the podcast is sort of your retirement plan. Yeah. But really, what does the future look like for you, for pain management, your role in pain management, uh, maybe back home as well? Mm. What is it like for you? What do I, you see? Yeah, I don't. You know, I really don't because I don't pre-plan. Mm -hmm. It just happens organically. What I really would like let me talk on here, <laughs> is for Ghana to make cannabis legal so they can ask me to come and do it for them. Mm. That is like, that would be my, you know, my goal to, yeah. you know, be able to get it going here in this country. We look forward to seeing <laughs> you here more. And I have a little gift for you from Diva Doc Let's Talk. This is a mug. Ah. Uh, yeah, well, I'm probably going to have you at the brown table soon. Yes. I'd love to feature. Yeah. Yes, I'd yes, definitely. Feature. Definitely. It's been lovely talking to you. Likewise. Yes, yes. We also have our mug. We'll, oh. put, it, we'll put it uh, the entire package together okay. for you. Okay. Oh, great. Thank and you then, so and much. And then um, if, a few presents from our sponsors. Oh. Yes. I, that's what I need, some sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> when you're not at, at your job, or, or taping a podcast or at the gym, <laughs> what would you be doing to relax? At the gym. <laughs> <laughs> That's my life. At, at the, the gym. gym. Yeah. 
at the gym i work out quite a bit you know because health you know i'm so into my health you know because i want to make sure that i live long for my children and you look it please yeah. take me along <laughs> <laughs> right let's take yeah. a look at the diy segment On a daily basis, I work as a physician, busy, busy physician. To be able to de-stress and um, have this work-life balance, I do work out quite a bit. So I start with the elliptical, and um, I'll do 10 minutes to get my heart rate going. So I usually take a, a spinning class with weights, and um, you know, we do the uh, biceps, and the triceps. So this is also for biceps. So I do squats. You know, I try to do about 50 of them. I include yoga into my workout. I'm gonna show you a few poses. One of my favorite poses is the tree. Um, where you have to sort of, it's sort of a balancing pose and then you're supposed to go down like so. Um, so I do like that pose. Um, it needs a lot of balancing and then basically you can stay like this. So that's also working your hamstrings, your glutes. This is another one that I like where I go, I balance on one leg. So thank you for joining me for this short version of my daily workout. Namaste. That's wonderful. So how long do you work out in, 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 mm, a, in a day? An hour tops. An hour? An hour. Okay. That's it. I see. The DIY segment is brought to you by Kel Chuckle Toothpaste brand. So go grab the Kel Chuckle Toothpaste. A bit more benefits. Which uh, includes prevention of cavity, it would uh, reduce dental plaque and it will whiten your teeth and enjoy the benefits of activated charcoal in that one. Still with me here is Dr. Wright. Doc, I wanted to talk to young people out there who may find them a place in your story. What's your word to them today? Keep focused, that's the big one. You know, just don't waffle or try to copy. A lot of people look at other people's lives and decide, uh, I want to be like that and try to copy or emulate. And that may not be your strength. So just be true to yourself. Do what you want to do and keep at it. You know, be persistent. And if you stay focused and persistent and authentic, you get there. Mm -hmm. You'll get there. And try to be the best at everything you do. Um, just try. And I tell my daughter that every time and she hates it. But, you know, she's in medicine and, um, I, I want her to, you know, be the best that she can ever yeah. be. So I'm like, Katie, just kill it. Just kill it. Because mm -hmm. when you kill it, you're not begging anybody. True. You, your work will speak for itself. Mm -hmm. And she's killing it, you know. So, I, yeah, just kill it. Thank you so much. So okay. we've got this package Thank for you, you from our Thank sponsors. You so it's much. got the Kel 360 it? toothpaste, the wow. Kel Kiss toothpaste, uh, the Sasso Mosquito Coal, oh, wow. uh, Roma Repellent. Okay. And then the mug I told you about. Oh, the okay. PL Shoes. Oh, thank you so much. And um, a lot of good stuff, though. We've got, we've, got something, some we've got something else for you. We hope to see it on your, uh, you know, the, oh the my next. God. So how many episodes do you have in a season for I your think podcast? From the producer says 13. 13. So for the next five episodes, yeah. we'd like to see this somewhere on the table. On the table. Yeah. This is specially oh for you. So I'm going to so leave it's, it. It's here. got your name here. Oh my God. <laughs> Yes. That's, oh, wow. And, and that's specially made for you. Oh, we, oh my goodness. This is... I'm and, so you, and you see what this is, right? So it's a mini stool for a queen. Oh. <laughs> so I got, I'm a hugger. <laughs> Can I hug you? Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, so it's meant to be symbolic. Yes, yes. You thank know? you so much. The You're a queen, uh, too. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> this, thank you. <laughs> but this is for you. Um, we hope that it finds a space in your bag. It will. I know you are. No, I'm actually going to leave it here and use it for my show. For and the put show. it on the table. Because mm. we go to our guests mm -hmm. with a set. All oh, right. We travel. 
Oh, I see. Yeah, I wanted to Sounds fun. Yeah. Anyway, busy. we wish you the very best. Yeah, yes, and, and thank you, you too. for coming. And thank, thank you. you for having me under such short notice. Yes, anytime, <laughs> anytime. Anytime you're in Ghana, just let us know. I we will. might just sit and have a, another conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Part Maybe two. this time just about the podcast. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and thank you too for watching us. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to Dr. Wright. I hope to see you here same time next week. My name is Kemini Amana. Bye-bye. Awesome. Great. That's what's awesome.